Hello viewers, welcome to today's lecture on cellular telephone systems. In the last lecture, we have discussed how wireless LAN can be used to communicate over a small geographic area. In today's lecture, we shall see how wireless communication can be used to cover a large geographic area. And here is the outline of today's lecture. First, I shall give an overview of cellular telephone systems. Then there are several important concepts that are being used in cellular telephone systems. First one is the frequency reuse concept. I shall discu discuss about it, which is very important for efficient utilization of channels in cellular uh, telephone system. Then there are several other concepts like mobility management, hand of management and location management because of the mobile, because the users are now uh, moving from one place to another. As a consequence, you require these features. Then I shall discuss about several practical systems. First one is the first generation uh, cellular network, AMPS, which was developed in North America based on analog technique. Then there are several second generation cellular network like DMs, GSM and CDMA. We shall discuss about them uh, in details. Then finally, I shall discuss about the goals of third generation cellular networks and this third generation cellular networks are still under development and also being deployed in some places. So, on completion of this lecture, the students will be able to explain the operation of cellular telephone networks, how a how telephone telephone networks works and the various other features of it they will be able to explain. Then they will be able to explain the operation of the first generation cellular telephone network based on analog technique that is your AMPS uh, advanced mobile phone system. Then the they will be able to distinguish between first generation and second generation cellular networks. Second generation cellular networks are essentially developed for digital technique uh, compared to in contrast to the analog technique used in the first generation uh, AMPS network. Then they will be able to explain the operation of the second generation cellular networks, the three types that I have mentioned, I they will be able to explain. Then they will be able to state the goals of third generation cellular networks. First, let us try to give the motivation behind cellular telephony. It is essentially a system level concept which replaces the single high power transmitter with a large number of low power transmitter. Conventionally, a very high power transmitter is used when somebody wants to cover, when uh, a large geographic area is to be covered, but this concept is not used in cellular telephony or cellular telephone networks. What is being done? A small, a large number of low power uh, transmitters are being used to cover a large geographic, geographic area. That is one important difference uh, between the conventional approach and the cellular telephone approach. And here the goal is to provide wireless communication between two moving devices. The moving devices are essentially mobile stations or handsets or between one mobile unit and a stationary unit usually referred to as landline. So, communication between two mobile stations or between a mobile station and a stationary station has to, to be provided. And of course, as I said, uh, uh, the another important goal is to accommodate a large number of users over a large geographic area. You look at the two points, first one is the
moves from one place to another, it is very common that they will move away from a particular cell and go to another new cell. So, it has to be done in a seamless manner and the approach uh, to, be part, to be used to satisfy seamless transfer is known as handoff. So, the conversations are to be handed off between cells, then the channels are used in one cell, channels uh, used in one cell uh, be reused in another cell uh, some distance away. As I, as I mentioned, this concept of uh, reusing, reuse of cell uh, frequencies channels leads to a higher number of higher capacity of cellular telephone network. So, let us have a look at the uh, simplified structure of a cellular system. It comprises the following components, mobile station, large number of mobile stations which are essentially mobile handsets which are used by an user to communicate with each other and cell is a, uh, a service area which is which uh, each cellular, uh, cellular service area is divided into small regions called cell. So, it can be 5 to 20 kilometer across and there is a base station and each base station contains an antenna which is controlled by a small office. And uh, in addition to that, there is a mobile switching center where each base station is controlled by a switching office called mobile switching center. It will be clear from the next diagram. So, here we see you have got a number of um, uh, cells. Here you see uh, this honeycomb like cells are shown here. In reality, it will be circular, but for the purpose of modeling, this honeycomb like cells are convenient to uh, uh, model. So, we, you see you have got a transmitter. Apart from this transmitter, there is a computer which controls this uh, transmitter. So, in the in each cell, you have got a transmitter and a computer which, com which controls the transmitter and you have got a number of mobile stations as you can see and a number of such uh, cells are controlled by a single mobile switching center which, which can be considered as an end office uh, in a uh, public switch telephone network and this is this in turn is connected to the public switch telephone network so that the mobile stations can communicate through the uh, base station and the mobile switching center and the public switch telephone network to any stationary phone or landline phone as i mentioned so these are the stationary station uh, uh, phones landline phones and these are the mo mobile phones so uh, this is the overall structure of the system. Now, let us look at the concept of frequency reuse, which is very important from the viewpoint of uh, channel, I mean the channel capacity. So, the cellular systems rely on an intelligent allocation and reuse of channels. So, each base station is given a group of radio channels to be used within a cell. And uh, base stations in neighboring cells are assigned completely different set of channel frequencies. That means, what is being done here, uh, say uh, the, this is being explained, this frequency reuse concept is explained here. For example, cells with uh, the, this is the, uh, this is a cluster. This cluster is the area over which all the frequency channels are being available. That means, uh, n cells which are collectively use the available frequencies is called a cluster. So, let us assume S is the total number of uh, channels available. So, which is being divided among n cells. In this particular case, n is equal to 4. So, A, B, C, D. That means, each of these cells will get one fourth of the channels available. That means, S by K is the number of uh, channels that can be used in each of these cells. Now, as you can see here, this A has appeared here. So, A has appeared here, A has appeared here. So, A has appeared twice. That means, same set of frequencies are to be used in these three 
uh, cells. Similarly, same set of frequencies to be used in cells B, cell B and cell B. So, in all these three cells, same set of frequencies will be used. So, this is the frequency uh, reuse concept. So, uh, but at one point you must notice that B's or A's are, as for example, 2 A are separated by, uh, in this particular case, at least by one cell. So, if you, if you have larger number of cells, uh, two reusing cells will be separated by several such cells. That means, the transmitter as well as the uh, transmitter power is will be restricted such that the signal does not reach another cell reusing the same set of frequencies. So, the reuse factor is used, which is essentially the fraction of total available channels assigned to each cell. Uh, within a cluster, which is equal to 1 by n. As I said, uh, S, uh, this fact S, if S is the total number of channels, then the total number of, uh, I mean the number of channels to be available in a particular cell will be equal to S by n, that is equal to k, k is equal to S by n. So, reuse factor will be uh, 1 by n. So, in this particular case, the reuse factor is 1 by 4. Now, uh, as I mentioned, by limiting the coverage area called footprints within the cell boundary, the same set of channels may be used to cover different cells separated from one or another by a distance large enough to keep interference level within tolerable limit, as I have explained with the help of this diagram. So, this is the uh, frequency reuse concept which is used in cellular telephony, so that the channel capacity, total capacity is increased. For example, uh, here the capacity is m into k into n. That means, if, uh, if in a area, if it is replicated m times, total capacity is multiplied by m. So, you may have uh, a, a hundred or uh, I mean a particular set of frequencies may be replicated hundred or thousand times depending on the uh, density uh, and the uh, density and the number of users. That means, uh, so, so you see the capacity uh, is multiplied by m uh, because of this reuse of uh, reuse factor. Now, uh, let us see how the frequency reuse uh, is, uh, is, uh, is dynamically changed. For example, uh, it is found that a particular area may be urban area where the population density is very high, densely populated. In that case, uh, the number of users is large, a particular cell is divided again into a number of smaller cells, so micro cells you may call. And again, you can reuse a number of uh, the, the frequencies, several frequencies. So, you see, uh, which uh, in an urban area, in a uh, rural area where the number of users is sparse, then you can cover by using a single cell. Obviously, the both the transmitter uh, of the base station as well as the mobile station's power will be will, will require larger power. On the other hand, here. Uh, the communication is restricted over a small area, which is shown in the magnified here form here. So, this is for the uh, densely populated area. So, in case of densely populated area, you will be using smaller cells. So, you will require lesser transmission power uh, to cover. On the other hand, sparsely uh, populated areas, you will be using larger size cells. That means, it will cover larger uh, area. So, footprint will be uh, bigger compared to this. So, in this way, in a dynamic manner, uh, the uh, cells can be uh, of various size depending on the number of users and uh, uh, number of users uh, or the population density. Now, uh, let us see how exactly the transmission and reception take place. Uh, we are all familiar with cellular telephone nowadays. A caller enters a 10 digit code, which is essentially the phone number, press and then presses the send button. The mobile station scans the band to select a free channel and sends a strong signal to send the number entered. 
So, mobile stations now does the transmission, the base station relays the number to mobile switching center. So, after receiving from the mobile uh, station, the base station now relays it to the mobile switching center. The mobile switching center in turn dispatches the request to all the base stations in the cellular system. So, as I said a mobile switching center may control a large number of base stations. So, it is broadcast over all the uh, base stations. Then the mobile identification number is then broadcast over all the forward control channels throughout the cellular system and this particular technique is known as paging. And the mobile station responds identifying itself that means, the destination mobile station responds by identifying itself over the reverse control channel. So, there are two different channels forward channel and reverse channel as we shall see and the base station relays the acknowledgement sent by the mobile station and informs the mobile switching center about the handshake. And the mobile switching center assigns an unused voice channel to the call and call is established. So, this is the sequence of events that take place whenever a uh, mobile station wants to transmit to another mobile station. Now, let us see what is the function of the mobile station which is receiving. So, in the receive mode all as you know all the idle mobile stations continuously listens to the paging signal to detect messages directed at them. So, and when a call is placed to a mobile station a packet is sent to the call is home mobile switching center to find out where it is. A packet is sent to the base station in its current cell which is then sent which then sends a broadcast on the paging channel. The callee mobile station responds on the control channel there are as you shall see there are the channel is divided into a number of data channels and control channels. So, this communication takes place over the control channel and in response a voice channel is assigned and its ringing starts in the mobile station. So, that means, whenever a mobile station is in the receive mode this sequence of event occurs and finally, uh, ringing take place in the mobile station and uh, a particular mobile station now can receive a call. So, this is how receiving take place. Now, let us consider the, uh, the consider how uh, the mobility of different stations are managed and that concept is that technique is known as mobility management. Uh, as we have already seen a mobile station is assigned a home network or I mean over which it can roam around uh, and which is under the control of uh, a mobile switching center and it, it is usually called as the location area. And when a mobile station migrates out of the current base station into the footprint of another a procedure is performed to maintain service continuity and this is known as hand of management. Uh, how it is being done? An agent in the home network called home agent. So, it is a some kind of software running keeps track of the current location of the mobile, mobile station. The procedure to keep track of the user's current location is referred to as location management. Now, hand of management and location management these two together are referred to as mobility management. Let us now see how the hand of management is performed then we shall see how location management is performed. So, as we have seen at any instant each mobile station is logically in a cell and under the control of call, calls uh, cells base station. Now, when a mobile station moves out of a cell the base station notices mobile station signal fading away and requests the neighboring base station to report the strength uh, they are receiving. The base station then transfers ownership to the cell getting the uh, strongest signal and the mobile switching center changes the channel carrying the call. As we have seen two adjacent cells do not use the same frequencies that means, the same frequencies as a consequence when a base uh, when a particular mobile station moves from one base station to another base station a different frequency channel is to be assigned and that is the function of the handoff. And uh, there are two uh, handoff techniques commonly used. One is known as hard handoff, and another is soft handoff. In case of hard handoff, a mobile station 
always communicates only with one base station. On the and and whenever it moves out from one base station to another base station, first it ter terminates communication with the present base station, and then uh, it starts communication with the uh, next base station to which it is moving in. So, in this way there is a sharp transition which takes about uh, 300 millisecond to take place. The transition will take about 300 millisecond. So, as a consequence in case of hard handoff the uh, communication is with one base station and uh, as, uh, as a uh, mobile station moves it changes from one base station to another base station and frequency is also the channel frequency is also change. On the other hand, in case of soft handoff, the base stations, uh, a mobile station communicates with uh, two base stations, two neighboring base stations. And as a consequence, uh, the base stations can, uh, can uh, it is, uh, they, they can tell about the signal strengths, they can get in, uh, the base stations and mobile stations know about, know about the uh, strength of the signals. Uh, both the stations are receiving. As a consequence, a, base, a mobile station keeps on talking with two neighboring stations as it moves from one base station to another base stations, it, it is performed in a soft manner. That means, while communicating with two at particular at a particular instant, it switches from one base station to another base station. So, that is why it is called soft handoff. That means, at a particular instant, the communication is performed with two base stations. Now, uh, let us focus on location management and uh, it requires two basic, comp, uh, two basic functions, two fundamental operations. One is known as location update, another is paging. So, when a mobile station enters a new location area, it performs a location updating procedure by making association between a foreign agent and the home agent. That means, the softwares which uh, are uh, keeps track of that. So, foreign agent is essentially the software running in that, uh, that host, uh, host uh, location area, I mean host area where it has moved and home agent to which the uh, mobile station belongs. So, one of the base stations in the newly visited location area is informed and the home directory of the mobile station is updated with its current location. So, uh, the, home, the, the home agent keeps track of it and it modifies the directory. And when a home agent receives a message destined for mobile station, it forwards the message to the mobile station via the foreign agents. That means, these, these two softwares running in two different systems uh, communicate with each other to, to keep track of the uh, mobile station. And of course, whenever it is being done, an authentication process is performed before forwarding a message uh, for a mobile station. So, in this how uh, in a in nut cell location management is performed. So, we have discussed about the basic operation of the uh, basic operations and functions to be performed in uh, mobile telephone networks, telephone systems. Now, let us look at the different implementations. First, we shall consider the first generation uh, technique. In the first generation uh, that was mainly designed for voice communication and although several uh, uh, systems were developed, the most popular is the advanced mobile phone system uh, used in North America that was developed, uh, developed by the Bell Labs and which was in operation in North America. And AMPS is a analog cellular telephone system as I have mentioned and it uses 800 megahertz ISM band which does not require any licensing. ISM stands for as you already know industry, scientific and medical band which is, uh, which is uh, which does not require any licensing and two separate analog channels are used. One is known as forward, another is reverse analog channels. So, uh, for duplex communication two separate channels are necessary. 
and the band between 824 to 849 megahertz is used for reverse communication that is from the mobile station to the base stations. On the other hand, the band between 869 to 894 megahertz is used for forward communication from base station to mobile station. Let us see uh, pictorially how it occurs. So, you see uh, the, uh, the these are the two separate bands, this is for forward communication. 869 to 894 band uh, which is used for forward communication which is divided into uh, uh, I mean 832 30 kilohertz channels. So, 832 30 kilohertz channels. So, you have got 832 distinct channels with different carrier frequencies uh, and similarly for reverse communication from the mobile station to the base stations you have got uh, again 832. Uh, uh, frequency bands each of 30 uh, kilohertz. And of course, all of them are not used for uh, data voice communication. As I mentioned, out of this uh, 832, 42 are used for control. Another technique approach is used. Usually, each location area is divided into uh, two sub uh, divided is, is shared by two service providers. That means, since two service, service providers are operating in the same area, that means the channels are also equally divided between them. And how? So, that means 832 is divided into two. So, each of them uh, have 416 channels available out of which 21 are used for control and remaining are used for uh, communication, voice communication. And it uses the FDMA technique. Let us see how it is being done. So, it uses frequency division multiple access to divide each 25 megahertz band into 30 kilohertz channels. So, you see so many analog channels are broadcast are uh, broadcasted simultaneously and um, here each of the voice channel 3 kilohertz voice channel is frequency modulated to generate 30 kilohertz analog signal which is used for communications. So, you have got uh, as you have seen out of 832, uh, 832 voice channels out of which of course, you have to subtract 42 that means 790, 790 voice channels are there. See 790 voice channels each of 33 kilohertz uh, after frequency modulation you get 30 kilohertz. So, that 30 kilohertz channels which are analog signals are communicated between base stations and the handsets by using frequency division multiple access. So, you see these are essentially were transmitted in parallel uh, through air and it goes to the uh, from the mobile station is goes to the uh, mobile that uh, transmitter or receiver in the base station. Similarly, uh, for the uh, forward channel from the transmitter instead of uh, so many uh, I mean you will have the base stations you have the uh, transmitter of the base stations from which uh, the signals are transmitted by using different frequencies and again 25 megahertz band is created. However, in that case the, uh, the bandwidth is the frequency band is different. So, you can see two different uh, frequency bands are used for communication in two directions. So, full duplex communication is performed between the mobile station. Uh, using the base stations and uh, two way communication is performed. So, two, two mobile stations are communicating with the uh, through the base stations to, uh, two mobile stations communicate each other through these base stations. And as you can see uh, in AMPS it uses freq uh, frequency reuse factor of 1 by 7. So, this is one cluster and uh, the the 400 that those frequency bands that means uh, the 832 frequency bands are divided by 7 and each can be used in each of these cells. So, uh, frequency reuse factor is uh, uh, 1 by 7. So, 832 by 7 that is the number of channels that is available in each of these cells. So, you have got 7 cells in a cluster. So, these are repeated in a honeycomb like fashion that is why it is called cellular communication because of this 
cellular network that means same it is same thing is repeated over and over it is name has come from this honeycomb like structure. So, this is amps uh, based on analog communication. Now, in case of uh, uh, the second generation communication uh, it was uh, based on a digital technique. We have seen that amps uh, uses analog communications and it is very easy to uh, uh, tap. I mean if teasing, I mean it is very easy to perform uh, ips dropping which is called ips dropping. That means, any receiver receiving a particular frequency, uh, we have seen those frequencies uh, each will have a particular carrier frequency. If it is if it tunes to that in the frequency uh, FM band, it will be able to receive the voice and that is how uh, you know there is an interesting story that uh, communication of that prince, princess Diana was recorded uh, uh, although they were communicating uses, using this uh, cellular phone and that uh, led to some problem. Uh, anyway, so this is not very private, privacy is less. So, there is no privacy you can say because there is no uh, uh, encryption or any other technique that is being used. So, very easily one can hear the voice of uh, other people's conversation. So, uh, and also it is not very uh, reliable. So, uh, and not very uh, high quality. So, uh, in the second generation technique, uh, it was developed to provide higher quality mobile voice communication and it is mainly based on digital technique. Instead of using analog approach, there we have seen that the bandwidth of the voice is only the 3 kilohertz and that is being frequency modulated to generate 30, may, 30 kilohertz. So, uh, instead of that, here it is, is done in a digital manner instead of analog technique. So, there are three different approaches uh, developed for that first one uh, is uh, interim standard 136, uh, which is also known as digital AMPS. So, AMPS is advanced mobile phone system uh, used in North America in the analog form and the digital version, version of it is known as uh, interim standard 136 and it is based on TDMA and FDMA. And second technique that is known as GSM. Uh, uh, which was developed in Europe before the digital system came in Europe many and an, many analog in different parts of Europe in in France in UK in other countries different analog techniques were used. So, they wanted to use a common digital technique and that common digital technique uh, that was that emerged was name uh, was given the name as GSM which is based on again TDMA and FDMA. And another technique that was developed based on CDMA is known as interim standard 95 based on CDMA, FDMA. So, we shall discuss these three digital techniques one after the other. First, let us consider the DMs, uh, which is essentially a digital version of analog AMPs and it is it is backward compatible with AMPs. By that I mean, if somebody is having the analog telephone uh, and analog handset and if somebody is having the digital handset, they can communicate with each other. So, that is why that uh, that is the basic objective of backward compatibility. And uh, as a consequence, they had to use the same bands and same channels at, at is, as it is used in AMPs. So, the bands and uh, channels used as same, not different and uh, it also uses the same re frequency reuse factor 1 by 7. So, except it is digital, rest of the thing is same as we see in terms of frequency reuse factor, in terms of frequency bands and channels, it is identical to amps to maintain frequency, to maintain backward compatibility. Now, here uh, as we say see as we shall see how uh, it is being uh, made digital. 
we, we, we notice that here the 3 kilohertz voice is uh, digitized using a very complex PCM and uh, compression technique to generate 7.95 uh, kilobits per second. If you perform simple, uh, uh, simple quanti I mean digitization, ob obviously it will be at least uh, say 3 into uh, 3 kilohertz. So, you have to sample it at 6 kilohertz, then you have to multiply with say 6 bit or 8 bit. Uh, that means, 6 into 8, 40, 6 into 8 is uh, 48 kilo, kilobits per second, but by use of suitable compression technique, uh, the uh, digital signal is having 7.95 kilobits per second. Oh, so, three such uh, anal these digital channels are time division, uh, I mean time division multiplexes. So, this, this multiplexing is performed in time division to generate uh, of course, uh, each of them is used and then uh, uh, let me show you the next diagram to explain this. So, actually what is being done here 25 frame, frames are being sent and uh, each of 1994 bits divided into 6 slots and these 6 slots are shared by 3 channels. That means, here you have got 6 slots say 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 that means 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, this is one, uh, one frame and you have got 20, uh, 25 such frames uh, uh, per second each of 1994 and bits and each slot is having 320 bits out of which only uh, data is 159 bits, 64 control and 101 is used for error correction. So, in this way you have got uh, this 48.6 kilobits and that 48.6 point kilobits is uh, converted into analog form, analog signal by using QPSK to generate 30 kilohertz analog signal and that is being uh, broadcast that is being sent uh, from the uh, mobile station to the uh, to the uh, transmitter receiver of the base station or from the base station transmitter receiver to the mobile station. So, this part as you can see is same as the uh, analog amps and this part is different to so that the digital technique is used. The second technique that is being used is known as GSM. As I mentioned, this GSM, which which uh, which is meant for uh, global uh, system for mobile communication, that was that's an European standard to replace the first generation technology. The first generation technology uh, that were used in different parts of U uh, Europe were different, but here it is combined to have a global system for mobile communication throughout Europe and uh, it is based on again uh, for duplex communication same uh, same set of con type of concept as DS, uh, DMs, but the frequency bands are different. As you can see here it is more towards 900 hertz than a, the earlier one was towards 800 k megahertz, here it is uh, more closer to 900 megahertz. So, you see the this is used for forward band. Uh, from 935 to 960, uh, each of 200 uh, kilohertz. Similarly, from mobile station to base stations, you have got 890 to 950 kilohertz, and you have got each of I mean you have got uh, uh, a number of a 20, a 124 channels, each of 200 kilohertz. And uh, how the um, different communicate different. Uh, I mean uh, different uh, signals are generated is shown here. Each voice channel is digitized and is compressed to generate 13 kilobits per second and then 8 users can communicate using time division multiple access and then they are converted, they are combined to form a multi, multi frame as we shall see. So, this is coming from an user, this is your user data and the user data plus user error control bits is 114 bits and then you have got some control bits these are added together 
to form a slot. And as you have seen, uh, you have got 8 such slots, one first user, second user, eighth user. So, from 8 such slots data is coming and these 8 slots uh, form a frame and 20 such frames form a multi frame and 26 out of which uh, out of this 26 frames 24 are used for traffic that means for voice or data communication and two are used for control and this this is repeated in 128 20 millisecond so if you uh, if you send this uh, the, this i combine all these together so to send one multi frame you require uh, I mean each multi frame requires 120 millisecond. So, 1 by 120 we have got 20 such frames and there are 5, 8 slots in each frame and each of each requires 162.25 uh, microsecond as we have seen. Uh, uh, and then th that gives you uh, millisecond that gives you 270.8 kilobits per second. So, once, once in this way you get 278.8 270.8 kilobits per second digital data. So, the digital data is converted into analog signal uh, by using this GMSK technique, which is essentially an, a, a, a modified version of uh, FSK. So, this, this 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 generate 200 kilohertz analog uh, signal which is sent to the uh, transmitter from the mobile station to the base station so similarly from the base station to the uh, mobile uh, base station to the um, uh, to the different mobile stations it is same except the frequencies will be different these carrier frequencies will be different so you have got 124 channels so, each of these channel can support 8 different users uh, sending digital voice or digital data also possible. So, this is how the communication is performed in GSM. <coughs> now, we have seen that it combines both TDMA and FDMA. So, by combining TDMA and FDMA, it is, it is able to send uh, uh, you can see 8 into uh, 124, so many uh, voice communication is possible uh, simultaneously. Of course, some of them will be used for control purposes. And there is a large amount of overhead in TDMA. Uh, we have seen that 114 uh, bits are generated by adding extra bits for error correction. And so, a very insignificant portion is data. So, overhead is very large in this GSM and because of complex error correction, it allows reuse factor as low as 1 by 3. That means, uh, here the, uh, the reuse factor will be 1 by 3 and each cluster will be having only 3 cells. So, this is the uh, case of GSM. Now, let us consider the uh, interim standard 94. 95 that is your CDMA. CDMA is quite complex in the sense uh, the forward transmission and reverse transmission is different. Forward transmission that is from the base station to the mobile stations. This transmission uses one uh, type of uh, signaling technique. On the other hand, mobile station to the base stations uses a different type of signaling techniques. Here it is it uses CDMA on the other hand uh, from mobile station to base stations uses direct sequence sped spectrum and FDMA. So, let us very quickly have a look at uh, how it is being done in case of your IS 95. In IS 95 uh, as you can see you are using uh, 3 kilohertz voice channel and by using digitization you are generating 9.6 kilobits per second. Then by using error coding, repeating and interleaving, you are generating 19.2 uh, kilobits per second. And this uh, use 19.2 uh, kilo, kilo, uh, kilo, uh, kilo uh, symbol per second you can say. So, kilo symbols per second you are generating and this kilo symbols per second 
it is being multiplied by using some uh, by a pseudorandom sequence, you can see here you have got a electronic sequence number which generates a uh, long code generator each of you know that 22 to the power tw uh, 42 uh, long uh, 2 to the power 42 uh, uh, long sequence uh, pseudo random sequence generator PRBS. So, this is a pseudo random sequence generator which generates 1.228 mega, uh, mega cycles mega chips per second. So, out of uh, 1 out of 64 is selected by this decimator decimator chooses 1 out of 64 and that is how it gets 19.2 kilo symbol kilo symbol per second which is being multiplied with the uh, that that data that is coming and to generate 19.2 kilo symbols per second. Then you are using a CDMA technique which uses a 64 by 64 uh, table Walsh table you already know the Walsh chip and uh, uh, for CDMA you require some kind of uh, synchronization. Here the synchronization is provided by global positioning si system through satellite. So, satellite provides the synchronization signal to the base stations and that is how the communication the CDMA technique is possible. And as you can see all will be transmitting simultaneously here there is no uh, serial communications and then these are performed uh, using QPSK, you are generating 1.228 megahertz, which uh, uses uh, by using FDMA, you get 25 megahertz band, which is being sent to the uh, from the uh, to the base to the mobile station. So it goes to mobile station, and you have got 25, 24 such analog channels. On the other hand the uh, reverse communication is uh, completely different as you can see it uses a, a digitizer uh, to generate 9.6 kilobits per second uh, from the uh, from the uh, 3 kilohertz voice then after error uh, error error coding repeating and interleaving you get 28.8 kilo symbols per second and <coughs> From this, it selects two uh, to 64 symbol modulation. Actually, uh, six symbols. Uh, it selects a six symbols, and each of them is coded as one out of 60, one, uh, one, one to 63 different numbers. So, one to 63, zero to 63 different numbers. That number, you know, by using electronic sequence number, again you generate here long code sequence generator. That is again two to the power 42 with pseudo random binary sequence which generates uh, 1.228 mega chips per second and this is multiplied with this uh, the, the, the signal coming here to generate direct sequence spread spectrum. So, here you see we do uh, the CDMA is not being used. So, this direct sequence spread spectrum goes to uh, QPSK to, to generate analog signal and these 20 analog channels goes from the mobile stations to the base station. So, this is how the, uh, the, uh, the CDMA technique uses the reverse transmission is performed in IS 95 CDMA technique. So, we have take, discussed the three different approaches used in second generation. Now, let us have a look at the third generation technique. This third gen in third generation technique uses both uh, digital data and voice communication. So, in case of uh, your uh, second generation, either uh, voice or data of very low capacity can be sent, but here the objective is to send good quality uh, or high band data of little higher rate and good quality voice. So, uh, and the ob uh, one objective is to provide universal personal communication. That means, one can listen music, one can watch movie, one can access internet, all these things would be possible by using third generation technique. And it has been, I mean there is a report that in Japan uh, where the third generation technique has been deployed 
people are not using uh, you, you know their laptops instead of that they are using these uh, 3g cell phones to perform most of the things which are being done by using lap laptops so these are the criteria of 3g technology so the voice quality should be good as good as the uh, uh, public switch telephone network the data there are three different types of data rates supported i mean to be supported whenever for moving uh, at for higher speed when a car for example you are traveling by car or train then the data rate can be 144 kilobits per second on the other hand if you are moving slowly for pedestrians the data rate is 384 kilobits per second uh, on the other hand for stationary objects for example uh, sitting in a room uh, you can communicate at the rate of 2 megabits per second. So, that you can see high data rate is supported in 3G technology and it is to support for data communication through both packet switch and circuit switch data services and to provide 2 megahertz bandwidth as I mentioned and interface to internet so that uh, in access to internet is possible. And with this objective, ITU developed a blueprint called Internet Mobile Communication for the year 2000 and IMT 2000 and it uses five radio interfaces, five different radio interfaces. So, you can say you have it has got five different standards using five different radio interfaces and all these five have evolved from second generation technologies. The first two are based on CDMA, first one is IMTDS using direct sequence spread spectrum and second one is uh, multi carrier IMTMC using multi carrier. The second two tech, second third technique is using the CDMA and TDMA uh, IMTTC, then the fourth technique is based on again TDMA IMTSC using signal car single carrier and the last one is based on FDMA. TDMA and FDMA, IMTSC, which uses frequency uh, time. So, these are the uh, five different techniques. We are not going into the details in this, uh, in one lecture, it is not possible. So, I have just given you the goal and the overview of the third generation technique. Now, it is time to give you the review questions. First question is What is the relationship between a base station and a mobile switching center? Second question is what is reuse factor, explain whether a low or a high reuse factor is better. Third question is distinguish between soft and hard handoff. Fourth question is what is mobility management. Fifth question is what is AMS and in what way it differ from DMS. Sixth question is what is the maximum number of callers in each cell in a, a GSM. And here are the answers of the uh, questions of lecture number 29. First question was why spread spectrum technology is used in wireless LAN? As we have mentioned, spread spectrum technology is used in wireless LAN because spreading makes it difficult for unauthorized persons to make sense, uh, make sense of the transmitted da data. That means, it provides you uh, some kind of privacy and security. Moreover, it also reduces the power density and provides redundancy. So, power density and redundancy is provided by, the, by using this spread spectrum techniques. Third, second question was how hidden station problem is overcome? As we already mentioned, the hidden station problem is overcome by using a four way handshaking protocol known as CSMA CA. So, by using this four way handshaking protocol, uh, uh, the collision is avoided and also the hidden station problem and exposed station problem are overcome, we have, we have, which we have discussed at length in the previous lecture. Third question was what is network allocation vector or NAV? So, when a station sends an request to send frame, uh, which is one of the uh, signal used in four way handshaking. It includes the duration of time 
that it needs to occupy a channel. All other stations which re receive the signal create a timer called network allocation vector. So, based on this information, net a timer is set and which is called network allocation vector that shows how much time must pass before these stations are allowed to check the channel for idleness. So, this is essentially is referred to virtual carrier sensing which we have mentioned in the last lecture. So, this network allocation vector allows implementation of virtual carrier sensing. Fifth question was what is WEP and how is it, uh, is it achieved? We have seen uh, because of broadcast type wireless communication, well, wireless lines are subject to possible breaches from unwanted monitoring. To overcome this problem and to get security similar to that of wired LAN, IEEE 802.11 specifies an optional MAC layer security system known as wired equivalent privacy. It is achieved with the help of a 40 bit shared key authentication service. By default, each uh, BSS supports up to 4 for, uh, basic service set. Uh, we know that supports 4 40 bit keys that are shared by all the clients in the basic service set. So, it provides per, uh, privacy without any integrity check. Fifth question was distinguish between PicoNet and ScatterNet used in Bluetooth technology. PicoNet is a small ad hoc network of at most 8 stations that you have seen. You can form a PicoNet uh, Pico having a master master station and a number of slaves up to 7 slaves. Now, a scatter net can be created this by using this uh, as a master station which is a slave of this pico net of another uh, pico net. So, here you have go, you can have a number of uh, slaves stations. So, this slave of this pico net becomes the master of this pico net that is how the scatter net is formed by combining several pico nets. So, uh, with this we come to the end of today's lecture uh, and in the next lecture we shall discuss about another wireless communication technique over much larger area by using satellite. So, in other words in the next class we shall discuss about satellite communication systems. Thank you.